Now, over the last week or two, uh, I've actually been film I've been tying and filming uh, a few saltwater flies, uh, mainly for sea trout. Now, there's a really well-known style of fly uh, for saltwater, and basically, it's what they call a flat wing. I'm trying to show. I've got some here. Is this this one to represent sand eel? Now, the flat wing is basically uh, a style where you, hackles are used along and they're laid flat on top of the shank. And what that does, I don't know if you can, you can actually see it there, but when it's, this is in the water and this is swimming, uh, I mean, the, it's like a fish. Just basically, the movement is mimics a fish. And uh, there's, I mean, there is a book on it, but it's quite, quite hard to find. Uh, I've only had a, a look and uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name, it's really bad, but what I'll do is I'll put it in the, the, the more info part below the video just so that you can see it. So the, basically these are the versions, or some of the versions I've been tying in the sand deal, whether it be with the, the eye, with the dumbbell eye style, uh, or a traditional with the, the style of fly the jungle cop was used in a lot of his patterns. So I'm basically going to be tying this one here. Now, hook choice is entirely up to yourself, there's lots of hooks out there. This one I'm using it's the heavier side, it's got this quite strong hook. Uh, you can go lighter wire if you want it to be a bit higher up as well as, depends on the line you're fishing. This is a streamer hook, uh, size 4, and this one's from a company called Airx. Um, nice strong hook. You want a nice flat shank on it, it's usually the straight ID anyway, so. Thread, again, it's up to yourself. As you probably know, I practically use 8 thread and everything I tie. Uh, I, though I do have a stronger it's just, I find it, I'm just that used to it, and you can get it tight, especially in the fly like this. Now you have run the wax through, now you could use in this, you could use a white head or a, which I've done one or two as well, this is a, an olive, an olive done, just to darken the head down. It's entirely up to yourself, but I'll just use the white. Yeah, I'm just going to put down a layer of thread along the shank to reach the point of the hook. And remove the waste. Now the underbelly of the sand deal is white, so I'm using white bucktail. Now you don't need a lot. This is basically tied in as support to support the wing and hold it up. This bucktail and a, a hackle is tied in to do that. So I mean this combination is my own to represent the sand deal in my, what I think would, does represent it so now you've, as you see I've got a few fibres here now you don't want it too long it's, it's just an under so basically an under wing or support as I say for the wing uh, if you look at the size maybe one and a half times the hook, the hook size or length just tie this on the top and then basically what it's going to do is just brush out like spread itself out which is fine. Trim this the length of the body. Now I've got a cock hackle, this is just a white cock cape, it's just a Chinese cock. And what I've got here is the, the hackle, it's a white hen, uh, sorry white cock hackle. Uh, I'm just going to tie it straight on the top and including the fluff. Now when you tie these lengthwise, depending on the size of the sand deals are, can be quite large. I mean, the, Six inches and more, even. Uh, so they're, they're different lengths. I mean, a comfortable length that suits you. Now that's about twice the hook length in this. As you see, the curve is up. Now that's going to support the wing. Now what I'm going to do here, this just amps to about the same length as the body. So I'm just going to quickly take my thread up and come back down nice and tight, following the tips of my fingers and pulling in the waist but just basically the waist of the, the hackle and there you are, and that's sitting nice so we've got the support for the, the hackles now you could two to three hackles again I mean I'm going to build up the colour so I'm going from white to a grey to a yellow olive to a dark olive and this will give you the colour of the, the sand deal, the back of the sand deal so and these are going to be tied in, that's normal, flat on top, just to like that. Now I'm going to tie it 
tie in some of the, the fine fluff as well. I'm just going to slowly extend it, so this is about maybe half inch or so further on than the white hackle. I want it on the top so make sure it sits before you do anything. Now the reason, a couple of reasons I like to tie in the fluff, it helps to control cushion the stem when I'm tying it in. Trim that way. Just leave that at this point. And then I'm going to tie in the yellow olive on top. Let me show you this first. So there we are. And because of the length of the fly I'm going to have to come out a bit. So I'm going to zoom out. So you can see the length of the fly, or the sand deal anyway. So we again we tie this on the top. Now I forgot to mention the hackles I'm using. These are saddle hackles. Uh, these are old, kind of old mates saddles that I have. So these are just short. These are I've had them for years. Uh, this is was a this here was a. Uh, like a ginger brown, which you dyed olive. Um, I've obviously got the natural, the, the, the grey is a natural colour. So it's just, I'm using these up. There were certain uh, saddles used and were renowned for, I think they came from Whiten, for tying flat wings. I think the nearest to them would probably be a Kirch. Yeah, I'm just going to tie that on. Tidy it up, just turn the thread up and back down. We put a tiny bit of flash in. And this here's uh, lots of flash out there. This is a crinkle flash. It's got that nice barren on it, which catches the light really well. I want two lengths. I want it slightly longer than the yellow olive. Tie it right on the top. Just gonna hold my thumb on top of the the wing and then these waist ends I'm just going to take one down either side you could cut them off but I don't it's not going to make any difference to the fly and then the last hackle on top is my dark dark olive again slightly longer as you can see the area where I'm going to tie it in you should be able to see that okay Again, I'm going to use the fluff as a cushion, two or three turns. And you see it sitting, it's fine. Just double check, you always check before you go forward, make sure you're happy with the fly. If you're hard, then you can trim away the waist. And again, I'm just going to tidy this up. And then for the body, it could be use quite a lot of things in the body of these flies. Uh, the, one of the things you can get, if I had a pair, no pair of this, but this is just a Madeira braid. There's a gold, there's a silver. You get a pearl. I've ran out of the pearl. Uh, so what I'm going to use, you could use a, yeah, a Onopo Mirage or a, just a pearl tinsel. But I'm just going to use, uh, to rough the body up a wee bit, a bit of dubbing. Uh, this is just the pearl light bright for the body. So tie this on. And I'm going to put it on quite light. I'm not going to make it too heavy. Just make sure I cover the body. Come up, give yourself around about four, four mil or so, five mil at the most from the eye. Fine, I'm just going to level the hook out a wee bit. You can lightly bring out some of the, the light bright and kind of use that to brush into work its way itself into the, the dressing. Give it a wee bit more life. It's fine. Now, the throat, as I'm going back to my white puck tail. Now, the underbody obviously is white, as I said. Now you want enough bucktail to 
cover the throw area and leave the top for the wing. So you, can, you could stack this if you wish, but I'm just going to line it up with my fingers. The length, just slightly by the hook. You could be shorter if you want. Now yeah, just you could just pinch and loop it on upside down. Different times. Got a wax there to make sure it sticks. Now that you can see the the bucktail flares a wee bit. Just checking it's all the way around, at least half. Yeah, that should do it. Bring out the bucket of the waist ends and trim them away. And work towards the eye. Tidy up. There we are. A couple of broken ends here, so I'm just going to take these out. And then for the wing, I've got a dyed, this is a dyed yellow olive bucktail. Now, I'm just going to basically put it in. You could, there's a couple of ways you could tie this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some nice, this is dyed sunburst. You can see the sunburst colour. Peacock. Now, when to put this in, you could put it in last, or you could put it in at this point. Um, I, I kind of always wonder when to put it in, uh, in this dress, and whether to put the bucktail in first and then this, or put this in and then the bucktail. I've always swithered over about the way to do it, because it's just I want to always look at a nice shape. And uh, so, basically, at this point, I'm going to put the Peacock on last, touch of the yellow olive just to brighten it underneath. Just gonna line up the ends a wee bit. And don't don't put too much on. The length you're looking towards, say if you're looking at where you put the, the support, the white, just to the end of that, use that as a guide. Wax my thread, tie it on top. There's plenty of room to tie the bucktail in, there's not much there either. I did notice a broken end there, which I hate broken end in flies. It did pop out when I was tying there. Disappeared, but anyway we'll leave it just now. I'm just using my finger here to flatten the bucktail, just to bring it down a wee bit. The body, if you put the body on too heavy, too thick, it'll lift the wing. That's why you keep it quite thin. Now I'm going to go back to there's four strands of the peacock with a herald there. Now I'm going to want like round about three quarters. I'm going to put it right towards the very end. So if you, your wing length, three quarters of the way, just a measure there. Trim. Relax, tidy the head area up. Now in the original flat wings, jungle cock was used in a lot of the patterns. Not too bad. And then, so that's what I'm going to do. You could use adhesive eyes, if you like. Whatever you have, I've got some with and some without. I'm going to just use two jungle cock eyes, two kind of, not big eyes. Uh, and s s the, the eyes on a sand dealer, not too far back, quite close to the head, so two eyes here. Tie them in. Put them on the sides, more than on the top, just in line with the body usually. Spend a bit of time lining them up. 
looking from the top down, making sure that they're both the same length. It's fine. Just going to fold back the waist ends, tuck them back. You've seen me doing that a lot of times, it just basically locks them in. Any fine fibres or anything, try and tie them down. Couple there, just building the head up a wee bit. And then let it finish. Trim away, break off the eyes, you'll get a neater cut if you do that. Now I'm going to use a. Everybody asked me about using UV resin. Uh, I usually just varnish most times, but I've got the, the UV, this is the bug bond, but because I've got a big fly I'm going to show you actually how I hold the, hold the torch. Now this torch is uh, this is one for Brenner's, but it's a bug bond one. It's no way around, but I can't even show you, because uh, it's connected. What happens when you, you can buy an adapter. Now, when you buy your torch, I've got the, the other end here. Obviously you put a battery inside, comes with the end with the turn it on and off. But you remove that and when it comes with the adapter and it's you plug it in, there's a wee pedal on the floor, the activator switches on and off. This goes in here in the place of the battery, then you screw it tight. And then you just press the pedal, you hear it clicking. You see it coming on and off. That's, that's how that light works. So what I do is I usually put it in my palm and then when I put the resin on I just lightly, this is a light resin it may be better with the heavier, it wouldn't run so much but I'm putting it lightly onto the head I don't really want it to run into the dressing so just nice and light and then instantly I can set it, stops it running so you've, you've got the torch there ready to go. And uh, just give it time to, to secure. I always like to make sure it's cured well. And like all resins, doesn't matter whether it's the old epoxies or whatever you had. Uh, you always get a residue or a tackiness from it after setting. So I would always use just a standard clear varnish. This is a vineyard one. I would always seal it. Keeps it gin clear, nice and bright. And seals, main thing, it seals it. Stops any water penetrating can get underneath it. If you normally, if you see something going white, especially varnish, as the chances are, it's lifted, the reason it's bent white is because it lifts off the thread, it lifts off whatever you sort of glued it to and then uh, if it gets coloured it just goes white, simple as that and, uh, and there we are now I'm going to show you what this looks like but the old trusty hair dryer is going to make a bit of a noise but you'll see how uh, the back moves really well uh, you're never going to see it better unless it's in the water uh, but anyway we'll just put the hair dryer on so you can see it and as you can see, it doesn't take much to get it to move, especially towards the back. Okay. Basically wiggle, the tail wiggles well because of the style. And at the same time you can see the proportions of your fly and uh, how it's going to sit in the water. Uh, obviously water's a heavier medium, so it's going to be a bit slower than than air. Uh, so. There you go, and that's the sand deal version of the flat wing, which are basically just a colour combination that I, I like to use in standard flies. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, again, if you enjoyed the videos, um, thank you for watching. Until next time.